Good morning, residents of Cypress Village, and welcome to Virtual Coffee Chat. Today is March 5th, and it's great that you're here tuning in with us today. We have a lot of information on the docket that we will share with all of you today, along with, I would say, a pretty exciting announcement that I will share with uh, the Village as well before the end of the Virtual Coffee Chat today. We're going to kick it off with Nick Law Liberty. He has going to give an update on VCTV, the facial recognition demonstration, and also an update, and also where we stand with the house life safety audit that started earlier this week. Followed by Nick, we're going to have Thomas Rivers. Thomas is going to provide some updates uh, related to dining services, and Brian Berger will be sharing the burger of the week this week with everybody. Uh, David Green has an update regarding the pressure washing project of all of the houses. I guess he has a couple other projects that he'd like to provide some uh, newer updates on as well. Katie Amador, Community Life Services, has some program highlights for the week. Lisa Green is going to give our residents, I guess, uh, we've got some winners related to the TPC uh, golf outing next week. Looking forward to it. Weather's looking good. Always an exciting week here in Jacksonville. And last but not least, some of you may or may not know our human resource director. Her name is Angie uh, Anthony, and she is going to give you an update on some of the awards that Life Care Services had uh, earned this year. And uh, she will wrap it up. And then once she's done, I will follow up with the exciting announcement along with COVID updates and actually a website that I guess a lot of residents have been wondering where I get my statistics. I'm going to provide that to you as well at the end of the uh, coffee chat today. So with that, I hope everybody enjoys and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Good morning, everybody. I'm Nick LaLiberty, the Director of Administrative Services. I have a few exciting uh, 2.5 updates for you today. The first one that I wanted to touch on is the entryways to the building. Um, when we first started looking into the facial recognition software for the C entry and the upper level garage entry, we were in the height of COVID. We saw no end in sight. We wanted to make a convenience for the residents to be able to get screened and to enter through those entryways because a lot of people have mobility issues and we understood that. We, we get it. We empathize with it and we wanted to make it easier on you. The exciting 2.5 update is when we go into that stage, which is very soon, um, we will be no longer required to screen residents. So what does that mean? That means we reactivate the fobs. And I know that's fantastic to hear. That's music to my ears, I can tell you, because I walk through the hallways, you know, and I, <laughs> I get it from all directions about the fobs and how hard it is to get into the building. Now, what we're going to do and what the game plan is, is we're still going to have these thermographic screening devices in the main lobby and in the healthcare lobby because we still need visitors, vendors, staff to screen and answer all these questions. Residents aren't going to need to do that anymore. Uh, it's only going to be those three subgroups. So that's extremely exciting. We're so happy about it. We're so just excited that, that we're here. We see the light at the end of the tunnel. Um, the next thing that I wanted to touch on is uh, 266. Uh, the good thing is that the movies are playing um, consistently. Now we're having a little bit of issues with the closed captioning. Um, we're looking into some options on what we're going to do from here to make it easier on myself and um, resident programs. And that will be explained in the future. But um, we're, we're happy that the movies are consistently playing, and uh, we look forward to exploring our options. Uh, last thing I wanted to touch on is the life safety audit that I spoke about a couple episodes ago. And we have started. We're, we're heavy into it. We started on Gordonia. Uh, we're almost all the way done that. And then we'll... Can, we'll, we'll keep going in other, you know, neighborhoods. You will get a notification in your kiosks, your boxes out at the kiosks that will tell you which week that your houses will be done. Um, if you're not home, we'll put a little flyer on your door. You just call security, say, hey, listen, I wasn't home. Um, 
please come by and, and test my systems and we'll test. So I hope everybody has a great day and a great weekend and I will see you around town. Thank you. Good morning, Cypress Village residents. Happy Friday. I'm here in the Loon's Nest Bar and Grill with a few announcements. The new Loon's Nest menu, or some minor changes to the Loon's Nest menu, will be taking effect this coming Monday. We're going to send that out to you in the uh, Friday update, and I'll be updating the app as well. So be on the lookout for that. we got a couple new changes, and hopefully just to keep it exciting. And then uh, we'll have the spring menu coming out later on towards the end of March, early April. So you can look for that as well. Uh, a couple other changes going on throughout the community. I'm, um, looking at changing a couple different menus. So assisted living, uh, I have a new type of menu format that we're looking to do in that area. I'll be sharing that with the residents at my monthly meeting um, with them. And as well as IL uh, at the Around the Dining Table meetings, we'll be talking about the new menu that I'm looking to try out in the uh, independent living dining room. And we're gonna be making some changes in healthcare as well. So a lot of menus going around, um, just trying to enhance what we do, try to be more consistent, trying to make things better and more exciting for you all so that's that's my ultimate goal so those are the only updates i had for this week so hope you uh enjoy your friday enjoy your coffee and we'll see you around the village good morning ladies and gentlemen welcome to loon's nest bar and grill on this beautiful friday morning we have for the burger of the week next week we have a hawaiian burger so starting with our regular all beef patty we have a jerk aioli on there, provolone cheese, a slice of ham, grilled pineapple, and a mango salsa. Hey, good morning, everyone. Dave with Maintenance. Uh, just a couple of quick updates. I don't know if you've seen the new drain in the koi pond, but it's the first step to improving that. Uh, in the next week, you'll see more plantings going in around it and rocks outlining the actual pond. So it's coming out really nice. So check it out when you get a chance. Uh, gotten a lot of questions about mulch. When is it going to be put in? We've changed the time of year that we're going to do it to accommodate for all the leaves dropping. Uh, I know a lot of residents, especially out on Goldcrest and Silkvine, that have the old oak trees. Um, the mulch gets put down, it looks great for a week, then the leaves drop and uh, most of the mulch just gets blown out. So. We've changed it this year. We're going to see how it works, but I believe now on mulch will be done in the month of March towards the end. Uh, the boathouse is going to be touched up in the next two, three weeks-ish. Uh, we're going to be paint, repainting the floor, uh, changing the color of the railings on a couple of places and uh, a couple of odds and ends on the new dock. So you'll see that. So if you see the boathouse closed off, understand it will be just for a day while we touch up the floor and get a fresh coat of paint on it, a couple of touch-ups and repairs. Otherwise, have a great day. Happy Friday, everyone. All right, good morning, Cypress Village residents. Lisa Green and I am going to be doing the raffle. So thank all of you for entering uh, your names to join me next Wednesday for the TPC outing. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do drawing right now with Katie as my witness behind the camera. <laughs> um, and then what I'll be doing is I'll be contacting you individually as well. Um, I will have some general information that I'm gonna be putting in your box that talks about the rules and what you can do, what you can bring. Um, so I'll be contacting you verbally to let you know you've also been selected. But I'm gonna go ahead, I have everyone's name entered. Uh, we actually had a total of 22 people um, that had an interest in coming and I have 15 tickets. So the 15 lucky recipients are Tom and Julie Bryce, Keith Chambers, Marty and Wendy Griffith, J. 
Jerry Sanda, Sue Harrelson. Penny Thompson. Carol Luckenbach. Tom Clare. How many more, Katie? How are we doing? So, all right, that's a total of 10. So, five more. Eleanor Hughes. Ted Levesque. Three more, okay. Teresa Harden. Don Gad. One more, last one, here we go. Mike Kennedy. Woohoo! All right, everybody. So those are the winners. And then I, like I said, I'll be contacting each of you via phone um, with all the instruction. And I'll look forward to having a super fun day next Wednesday, the 10th, out at the TPC. Thanks so much. Good morning, Cypress Village. My name is Katie Amador. I'm the Director of Com Community Life Services, and I have quite a few updates for you all today, so please bear with me. Um, it's been a couple of weeks since I've been on Coffee Chat. Tiffany has been filling in since I've been behind the camera, so I am happy to be here again this week with some very exciting information. The first uh, piece of information or update that I have for you all is in regards to some programs highlights for next week. So I am going to go through those now. On Monday, March 8th, we've got a nature walk with Abby that is taking place at 10 a.m. and will leave from the main lobby. So please join us for that if you're interested in uh, taking a walk around the lake, looking at some, some nature and getting some fresh air. On Tuesday, March 9th, Jean Nordan will be performing in Egret Hall at 6 p.m. Uh, there is a couple of ways that you can tune in or take part in that. Number one would be to sign up to attend in Egret Hall at 6 p.m. Uh, number two is to check it out live on Comcast Channel 266. And the third way is to tune in live or catch the replay on our Facebook page, which is um, facebook.com slash Cypress Village Retirement. Uh, and you can check us out there with or without a Facebook profile. Uh, my next program's highlight is on Thursday, March 11th, Pinspiration is coming to do a craft class and we will be creating St. Patrick's Day door hangers. The cost for that class is $10 and includes all of the supplies that you'll need as well as the instruction that Pinspiration will be providing and you will leave the class with a really cute do-it-yourself craft so consider joining us for that. On Friday, CV Cinema will meet at 6 p.m. in the OMR and we'll be viewing the movie In Other Words. And on Saturday, we have the long-awaited shredding event, Shred It Truck, coming to Cypress Village right outside um, the main lobby and train lobby. You can bring any documents that you need or would like to have shredded and they will do so at no cost. Um, and again, that is Saturday the 13th from 10 to 12 outside in the main parking lot. With that, if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, please feel free to reach out to Tiffany or myself. I will put our contact information below. Um, Tiffany's phone number is 807-6224 and my direct line is 807-6116. Or you can email resident programs at cypressvillageretirement.com. Hi, my name is Angelique Anthony. I'm the Director of Human Resources. And I'm excited to announce that LCS has been named a USA Top Workplace. This award recognizes our company culture and employee engagement, which makes us an employee of choice. We are proud to be acknowledged for our culture of excellence delivered by our employees. Details to come in, resident, in the residence newsletter. See you later. All right, I'm back. And uh, I, I do have some exciting information. I, I would hope it's exciting. 
we are officially just over our one year anniversary of being in the COVID pandemic state here at Cypress Village. And it's been a long, difficult year. I'm very proud to say that we have weathered it thus far very, very successfully. And that is a dual you know, um, responsibility of both residents, staff, management, and all the efforts that we have done and the ac actions we have taken to remain safe and healthy. So congratulations to all of us, you residents and us staff, our family, we really, really did for the amount of people that we have on this campus and what we do day to day, uh, we were extremely successful. At this time, I do not have the final numbers for vaccinations or uh, you know, COVID-related illnesses here at Cypress Village, but we do plan to provide that to uh, the community as soon as we have that completed. I'm thinking we'll be able to share that with everybody next week. So uh, with that being said, I wanna let everybody know that we are in the process of submitting our plan for reopening 2.5, not quite three, um, here right now. We're in the process of drafting the plan. We have reviewed the plan with uh, the council and we feel that we have a really good plan as a next step to reopening Cypress Village safely but also uh, socially where our residents can start to doing some of the things that we did prior to the prior to the pandemic. You know, some of those highlights, I'm not gonna go into the full detail, but some highlights are related around dining. Residents are going to be able to start dining again with other residents. There will be caps on the amount of people per table and the amount of households that are combined at the table, but I think that is a very exciting uh, piece of news that in the very near future, you're gonna be able to do that again. Um, another one is visitation. You know, we've been extremely strict and very, I would say very consistent in visitation. We have only allowed it, you know, in most cases when it's needed or there's been a very, you know, dire request of a family member or a resident. Well, in 2.5, visitation is going to be allowed. There are gonna be caps on the amount of visitors and the time that visitors come in. But uh, I think that is gonna be another really big win for not only you, the residents, but your family members where they can come in and see you or your friends to stay with you, visit with you, whatever it may be. And last but not least, you know, entry into the building. I know that has been a huge encumbrance for many residents, a very, very, you know, difficult situation when you're parking in the parking garage and your apartment is, you know, a quarter mile away from where you're parking. You can't get in the garage entrance. You have to go to the main lobby. Those of you in the A Tower, the same, you know, have the same challenges. I will be very, very happy to announce that in this plan that we are proposing to our home office, which is not yet approved yet, you will be allowed to enter the building at all those entrances via your FOB key. So that's another big win that I think will make a lot of you happy. Again, that is not approved yet, but I am very, very comfortable at this point based on conversations and calls that I've had with home office that we're going to accomplish both of those items. I'm not gonna get into the you know, details of the entire plan, but what I would like all of the residents to know is I will put together a very formal letter along with all of the components related to 2.5 reopening um, at some point next week, probably by the end of next week at the latest, with a implementation date scheduled for, for March 17th, St. Patrick's Day. So uh, with that, I hope you enjoyed today's um, episode. I'm going to get into some COVID statistics and then birthdays, and we will call it a Friday. All right, let's see what we have. I'm not going to get into, um, in meeting with uh, resident council, they didn't want me to get into Florida statistics. They thought that was a little too macro. I will continue to provide statistics related to Duval County. There is one statistic in Florida that I do like to reference. I won't reference the total number of cases or hospitalizations or deaths for that matter. But I do want to say that the new cases of confirmed cases of COVID in the state of Florida 
for the last 30 days have been very, very stable, actually dropping somewhat, but they're all very, very positive uh, trends. So as long as we can continue with uh, what's going on throughout the state, I think we'll see that you know uh, correlate to what's going on in Duval County. In Duval County, we're at 89,177 total cases. That's resulted in 1,186 deaths and uh, roughly 2,000 hospitalizations. So, you know, I wanted to provide residents the website where I collect this data and present this data to, to our community. And I'm going to do the best I can with this. It's, it's the Florida Department of Health, but the website specifically is F D O H dot m a p s maps dot arc gis which is a r c g i s dot com one more time just the letters f d o h dot m a p s dot arc gis a r c g i s dot com so if anybody wants to reference some of the uh, data that we have access to, that's been the best site that uh, we, have, we have found to uh, give us the key indicators and all the information that we, uh, that we look to for making decisions here at Cypress Village and Duval County. So I hope that's helpful for everybody. And we're going to turn it over to birthdays. Today is March 5th, and uh, let's see what my... My partner here, Katie, has for me. All right, who's, who's, who do we have? Wow, you're not going to believe this today. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight birthdays on March 5th. I'm going to start with Chuck Herklotz. Chuck, happy birthday. Lorraine Duncan, Ann Hopkins, Betty Shepard, Louise Rogers. Nora Manahan, Jerry Clare, and Deborah True. Happy birthday to all of you March 5th birthdays. That is a lot. That could be the most. We've got to remember that number, Katie. Eight birthdays. On the 6th, we've got Joan Lunt and Nancy Hagadushiko. I can never pronounce that. Apologize, uh, Nancy and Spiro. But uh, happy birthday, Nancy and Joan. On the 7th, we've got one of our new residents, John Stavros and Helen Bryant, Gail Nichols and Suzanne Lamy are all on the 7th. We have one on the 8th. We've got Barbara Borowski. On the 9th, we've got Chuck Meyer and Pat Chatfield. And on the 10th, we've got uh, three. We've got Mary Fowler, Carol Bryce, and Maris Santangelo. And on the 11th, we've got Miss Best Turk and Carol Basile. And I'll wrap it up with the 12th. We've got Miss Jane Campbell. Happy birthday, Jane. Patsy J. And that'll do it. Well, I'm going to stop on the 12th. So happy birthday to the eight of you today. And uh, all of those others that we mentioned, happy birthday uh, coming up this week. So... I'm just going to sign off and tell everybody to have a good weekend, and thank you for tuning in. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.